chief and his brethren. Good evening if you're just joining us of the sons of Elijah on YouTube. Shemaiah the chief and his brethren too. Services will be of starting in about two and a half minutes. And his brethren fourscore. You're hearing first Chronicles fifteen being read in the background. And David called for Zadok and Abathar the priests, and for the Levites, Uriel, Messiah, and Joel, Shemaiah, and Eliel, and Aminadab, and said unto them, You are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Sanctify yourselves, both ye and your brethren, that ye may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel to the place that I have prepared for it. For because ye did it not at the verse, the Lord our God made a breach upon us, for that we sought him not after the due order. So the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. And the children of the Levites bear the ark of God upon their shoulders with the staves thereof, as Moses commanded according to the word of the Lord. And David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be the singers with instruments of music, psalteries, and harps and cymbals, sounding by lifting up the voice of joy. So the Levites appointed Heban the son of Joel, and of his brethren, Asaph the son of Bechariah, and of the sons of Merari, their brethren, Nathan, the son of Cushiah, and with them their brethren of the second degree, Zechariah, Ben, and Jeziel, and Shemirah. Okay, if you're Jezeel, just joining us, we'll be going, Eliab, well, sir, say live, we're live now, but we'll be Bezai, having services in about one minute. And Elephala, and Mechnia, and Obedidim, and Jael, the porters. So the singers, Heman, Asaph, and Nathan, were appointed to sound the cymbals of brass. And Zechariah, and Aziel, and Shemaramoth, and Jael, and Uni, and Eliab, and Messiah, and Beniah, with Psalters on Alamoth. Okay, we've got Larry on here. And Alephala, and Magnia, and Obedinum, and Jael, and Isaiah, with harps on the Sheminath to excel. And we have a few connected and watching. I can't tell who, but we do have a few. Instructed about the song. And you're hearing First Chronicles being read in the background. And were doorkeepers for the ark. Shabania and Jehoshaphat and Nethanel and Amasai and Zechariah and Benaiah and Elizer the priest did blow the trumpets before the ark of God and Obedinah and we got Ken and Aaron for the ark. This so name with us this evening and the captains over thousands went to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the house of Obedinah with joy and it came to pass when God helped the Levites and okay it's six o'clock it is six o'clock it's uh time to begin our services it's good to have everyone who's on i know we've got uh of course me and ruby here and mom uh, just talked just saw jerry and abby so i'm sure they're listening and sherry um got ken and aaron and got larry on the phone so <clears throat> i'll mention this at the end but this is our last scheduled broadcast from the house. Next Sunday, we plan on being at the building for all services, and we hope it can remain. I know that news reports really saying that the virus is getting much worse, so we'll just have to see how things bode over the next few weeks. But hopefully, uh, we can be back uh, at the building to stay. Now, this Wednesday night, there will be no service at the building or on YouTube. I'll be speaking at Horse Cave. And uh, but it will be broadcast on YouTube live. Uh, so Facebook live, Ruby. Um, thank you for correcting me there. It'll be broadcast on Facebook, not YouTube. But let's go ahead. Um, this is our last service. Uh, got the slide up for tonight. These were the three selections I used when in Arkansas on the day of Ruby's mother's funeral when she was laid to rest. And we broadcast from Arkansas. You remember outside, and uh, all you can hear all the birds and everything. So this was the three songs that we used in the same order. So I thought it would be uh, a good way to close out our our services from uh, home. Number four hundred six in the blue book. I'll fly away. Hope everyone has had a good Lord's Day. It was very warm this morning, but at least here we had. Uh, quite a bit of thunder and very heavy rain this afternoon and about a quarter of an inch and it's down to 74 degrees and we have Adam Glass listening number 406 <clears throat> some glad morning when this life is o'er fly away to 
a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. I'll fly away. Oh, glory. I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away when the shadows of this life have grown. I'll fly away like a bird from prison bars has flown. I'll fly away. fly away when I die hallelujah by and by fly away just a few more weary days and then I'll fly Joy shall never end. I'll fly away. I'll fly away. Oh, glory. I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by. Number 74, Holy, Holy, Holy. We'll sing this before our lesson tonight. It's a rather lengthy chapter, and uh, but mostly a reading of names of the priests and who came together to dedicate the wall of Jerusalem. But there's all these, there's great spiritual lessons to be had. Number 74. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, holy, Eternally, holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the crystal sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, who wast and art and evermore shall be. Beside thee, perfect in 
and power in love and purity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God over all and bless eternal. Okay, if you want a mark in your book or whatever book you have that has Abide With Me in it, we'll sing one verse of that in just a bit as our closing song. If you will be turning to Nehemiah chapter 12, we have at least eight people connected by YouTube, so there's a lot more listening than have texted me, and I'm glad that you're listening, and uh, hopefully uh, we won't have to broadcast from home again. As I mentioned this is our last service uh, broadcast online, uh, except for the occasional where it might be gone somewhere. But uh, Wednesday night, our last one like this, and Sunday morning, we hope that we can resume our full slate of worship services. It's been about three months, and I really miss all of our services at service. Young children are walking up to the classroom, not understanding why they can't have class. I miss the evening services and just the uh, getting together. And we have Jerry, Sherry, and Elena uh, listening. And so, um, let's go over Nehemiah chapter 12. It's a rather long chapter, and I'm going to uh, mostly be reading names tonight. Jerry and Abby were just over here. I said, well, Ruby suggests we have a guest reader and let Jerry read the names. <laughs> these, these are pretty challenging names. And, uh, but what this chapter is, is a celebration of the dedication. They're dedicating the wall. You know, we have dedication. A new business will open. You'll know, have an open house and a gathering. And, you know, it's rather festive. Maybe some food and things like that. And that's what's happening here. And the Lord has timed this book so well, I think it's perfect with us returning back to our services at the building, all of our services, because in a sense, we're rebuilding the spiritual wall, getting back to where that it was. And so uh, I hope with these remote services and getting back to Sunday morning a few weeks ago that no one uh, will lose their uh, fervor for attendance and we'll be back among us and we have the candelas are listening i'm no doubt anthony and lauren and i'm sure evelyn is there as well so we have uh, them listening and if anyone joins during the lesson i'll acknowledge you uh, after the lesson but hopefully some others are listening i know Stuart's on the road and uh, he may not be able to listen but let's read through this chapter uh, it is uh, 47 verses so it'll take a minute, but I'll mostly be reading with a little comment, at least for a lot of the chapter. And so this is such a fitting book and chapter because in a sense we're rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem by getting back to our worship services. And this chapter is working out that we're celebrating and the, the dedication of getting back. Now these are the priests and the Levites that went up with Zerubbabel, the son of Sheltiel, and Joshua. Sarai, Jeremiah, Ezra, Amariah, Maluk, Hatush, Shechaniah, Rehum, Merimoth, Ido, Genetho, Abijah, Maimon, Madiah, Bilgah, Shemaiah, and Jorab, Jediah, Salu, Amok, Helkiah, Jediah. These were the chief of the priests of their brethren in the days of Joshua. 
Moreover, the Levites, Jeshua, Benui, Cadmiel, Sarabiah, Judah, and Madaniah, which were over the Thanksgiving and his brethren. It's interesting, we actually had a group of men over the Thanksgiving. I know we all do, but never fail to give thanks for your food and just uh, everything that you have from the Lord, your good homes and heat in the winter, cool in the summer, and the things that you have. They even had people set over the Thanksgiving, he and his brethren. Also, Bakbakiah and Unai, their brethren, were over against them in the watches. And, and what it says over against them, the new King James said, stood across them. So you had like, people that were over the thanksgiving and uh, no doubt to lead the group in their prayers and giving of thanks and of course the sacrifices that would have been made and Joshua beget Joachim Joachim also beget Elisha and Elisha beget Joada and Joada beget Jonathan and Jonathan beget Jada and in that we're going through some of the the genealogy here of some of the uh, men involved and then the days of Joachim were priests, the chief of the fathers, of Sariah, Merariah, of Jeremiah, Hananiah, of Ezra, Meshulam, of Amariah, Jehohanan, of Malachi, Jonathan, of Shebaniah, Joseph, of Harim, Adna, of Merimoth, Helkiah, of Ido, Zechariah, of Genathon, Meshulam, of Abijah, Zikri of Minimim, Minimim, men of Modiah, Peltai, of Bilga, Shemua, of Shemaiah, Jehonathan, and of Jorib, Madaniah, of Jediah, Uzziah, of Salai, Kalai, of Amok, Eber, of Hilkiah, Hashabiah, of Jediah, Nethanel. Okay, quite a list of names. I'll take just a, a break there from reading the names. It uh, gets a little challenging after a while. And there is a purpose for all these names. Uh, that I'll go ahead. We had a couple of others join in. I was going to, but we have Sharon Franklin listening. And Sharon, I put your mother, uh, Ms. Baker, on our prayer list. I'm, you probably saw earlier. And we have uh, Vicki uh, joining in with us this evening. So we have a a good crowd, at least nine people connected, I can tell. Um, of course, many of those have multiple people listening. There's a purpose for all these names. These names are the ones who helped with the dedication of the rebuilding of the walls. The walls of Jerusalem had been torn down under the reign of Nebuchadnezzar. One of his generals, Nebuzaradan, came to Jerusalem. Well, we learn this from other places in the Bible and had burned the walls, tore them down, burned the houses of the chief men in the house of the Lord. They had burned Jerusalem down. And so now they're rebuilding. And this was a very important time. And so the list of names of who was part of the rebuilding. And one of the lessons I would make, will you be among those who help rebuild worship at Mumfordville? We've never ceased to worship, but we haven't been able to worship at the building most services since March and, uh, you know, about mid-March. So we're, we're going on close to four months. So we've been doing this and, uh, you know, all of spring basically and mo much of summer here. And so as we do get back into worship, of course, I know things are subject to change and we might have to redo some of these things again and we pray we don't. But will you be part of the returning and dedication and celebration? I hope everybody will. And don't let this time that we've been apart and uh, keep you from being there. And we got Chris and Misty Bush listening. And so glad they're joining in. They had their grandchildren and his mother at services this morning. And uh, so we're very glad that the, uh, they were with us this morning and listening in tonight. But let's all be part of our return at Mumford Bill of worshiping. I have to admit, it might be a little hard on some, me included, being there an hour earlier next week. We have our services at 9, so we'll be going back to 9 and 10 next Sunday, and then on Sunday and Wednesday evening, back to 6. But we can do that. You know, that's not nearly as early as going to school or going to work for many people. 
And we can do that for the Lord. We've been doing it for years. We do that to cater to our uh, Eastern time zone members or people that go by that time. And uh, uh, people seem to enjoy that time. And so we need to get back to the rededicate ourselves, if you will, to the spiritual rebuilding of the walls. Let's go ahead and finish out this chapter. And we'll be done by about 635. The Levites and the priests of Elisha, Joada and Johanan and Jedua, were recorded chief of the fathers, also the priests, to the reign of Darius the Persian. So this gives us a time frame. You remember Darius is talked about in the book of Daniel. He was one of the kings of Persia of this time. So this is a time that they had come back and um, from captivity in Babylon, but it mentions they, they state the time frame until Darius, the reign of Darius the Persian. The sons of Levi, the chief of the fathers, were written in the book of the Chronicles, even until the days of Johanan, the son of Elisha. And the chief of the Levites, Hashabiah, Sarabiah, and Jeshua, the son of Cadmiel, with their brethren over against them, to praise and to give thanks, according to the commandment of David, the man of God, ward against ward. So they had the people situated in such a way, uh, it almost seems like two sections, almost the way the church building is laid out. And during this uh, virus, we're really using the other half of our church building. It's not full, which is good. Actually, right now, I mean, I wish we had enough to be full, but we're having to spread out. But they were, brethren were over against their brethren to praise and give thanks. Now, I'm not for sure how that they did this, but Ruby, being a music major, knows some of the songs of antiquity of how that they would do. Uh, one side would say something, the other side would repeat it. And that's often the way that songs of the olden days were done. And, and they may have done this. One side would maybe ask a question, uh, who is Lord of all? And then the other side may answer, it's Lord God of heaven. And that's how they would do their songs. And so they would praise and give thanks this way, ward against ward. So they, they were opposite each other, praising and giving thanks. So I hope when we return, you'll be there praising and giving thanks. Mathaniah and Bakbakiah, Obadiah, Meshulam, Talmon, Akkub, were porters keeping the ward at the thresholds of the gates. So they had people, uh, it says, keep the watch at the storerooms of the gates. So they had people watching these areas uh, because they're just getting back into the town. You remember, into the city. Last week we talked about they repopulated Jerusalem by lot. 10% of Israelites were relocated to Jerusalem, and they, they did that randomly, but there were some who volunteered to go. These were in the days of Joachim, the son of Joshua, the son of Josadak, and in the days of Nehemiah the governor and of Ezra the priest, the scribe. These were Ezra and Nehemiah, of course, are very major characters here during this time. As I've mentioned in some older Bibles, Ezra and Nehemiah are one book. Ezra was the priest, and he's also a scribe writing these things. And uh, Stuart must be listening, and I'll just comment because he said the church in Little Rock still does singing that way. So where he stopped and worshiped in Little Rock. And and I've done some singing that way as well. Where once I used to do it at Bible camp a lot. Uh, we would, uh, <clears throat> of course, be in Bible camp. You would have the girls' cabin on the opposite side, maybe of the camp or across. And somebody would be, uh, we'd be on the other side, maybe across lake or something like that. And one side would sing, another side would answer. Sometimes maybe spiritual songs, sometimes just camp songs. But I'm glad Stuart mentioned that, that the church in Little Rock still sings that way. And that's a very biblical way of singing is side against side. And in a way we do as well. Uh, maybe not side, but we'll sing a part and then the alto will answer. And then the men will maybe have a bass part. And so we still do that. But Ezra and Nehemiah, Ezra was a priest and scribe. Nehemiah was the governor of the land. And at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, that's really what we're doing when we get back. We're not having a formal dedication Maybe uh, some have suggested after we get back into worshiping, maybe we can have a meal together. We're sure supposed to social distance, but sometime I'm sure we'll have a celebration of some kind. We're just glad to be back together. And at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought the Levites out of all their places to bring them to Jerusalem 
to keep the dedication with gladness, both with thanksgiving and with singing, with cymbals, psalteries, and harps. So they came back together, great celebration, great musical celebration. And so they brought the Levites out of all their places. And so I hope that we will take this lesson. Let's come out of all of our places next week and before, you know, but starting next week with all of our churches, all of our services, let's come out of our locations and our places and get back to our worship services. And the sons of the... And the sons of the singers gathered themselves together, both out of the plain country round about Jerusalem and from the villages of Natophathi. And so all from the country areas, rural, whether they lived in towns, they, they came together. Also from the house of Gilgal and out of the fields of Geba and Asmabeth, for the singers had built them villages round about Jerusalem. It's interesting, they had people that were specifically just singers that would come and sing. And they lived in villages round about Jerusalem. Some of the people lived in the cities and smaller villages, and some lived just out in the country, much the way we do today, though we don't have any larger cities nearby. And the priests and the Levites purified themselves and purified the people and the gates and the wall. As I was reading this this afternoon, I thought about them purifying the physical things, and they were required to do that. Objects had to be purified under the old law. We don't do that under the New Testament. But we, to properly worship the Lord, need to purify ourselves. Not a washing with water, though baptism is in water that puts us into the Lord. We keep ourselves purified from sin. You know, we, we certainly believe on the Lord. We confess His name. We, we repent of our sins. And, and baptism is a burial with Him that purifies us. And there are times that we become soiled spiritually. We purify ourselves by prayer to the Lord and asking for forgiveness. So at their dedication, returning, let's always keep ourselves purified. Then I brought up the princes of Judah upon the wall and appointed two great companies of them that gave thanks, whereof one went on the right hand upon the wall toward the dung gate, and after them went Hoshea and half of the princes of Judah, and Azariah, Ezra, and Meshulam, Judah, and Benjamin, and Shemaiah, and Jeremiah, and certain of the priest's sons with trumpets, mainly Zechariah, the son of Jonathan, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Madaniah, the son of Micaiah, the son of Zakur, the son of Asaph, and his brethren, Shemaiah, and Azarel, Malala, Galiah, Maiah, Nethanel, and Judah, Hananah, with the musical instruments of David, the man of God, and Ezra, the scribe, before them. So you had Ezra leading this group of uh, people. They were playing instruments. They were. Just, this was a big celebration of coming back to Jerusalem and dedicating the wall. And at the fountain gate, we learned quite a few gates. I think if we go throughout Nehemiah and Ezra, we'll see there's 12, I think maybe 13 gates that are listed upon Jerusalem. Many ways for them to go in and out, and gates serve different purposes. There was a horse gate, fish gate, we'll see a water gate, and here's the fountain gate, which may or may not be the same as the water gate. And at the fountain gate, which was over against them, they went up by the stairs of the city of David at the going up of the wall above the house of David, even to the water gate eastward. So a uh, fountain gate may have been a subsection of the water gate, but... It's where that the people got water. And of course, you know, during the time of Hezekiah, before Jerusalem fell, he, he had built a conduit and brought water into the city. Jerusalem had running water, probably not in their individual houses, but to the city. They actually had an aqueduct uh, feeding the city water, a conduit. Just a few more verses here, 10 more verses. And the other company of them that gave thanks went over against them, and I after them. So this is Nehemiah reporting this. And the half of the people upon the wall from beyond the tower of the furnaces, even unto the broad wall. He talks about a tower having furnaces. They had a place where that they burned things. What? Probably refuse. And also we'll talk about there was a tower that had ovens in them as well. There may have been a public place to cook. People didn't, didn't have it in their homes. Maybe a place to get rid of refuse as well. And so they had a tower even with furnaces in it. We learn a lot about Jerusalem from these books. 
And from above the gate of Ephraim, and above the old gate, and above the fish gate, and the tower of Hananel, and the tower of Mia, even into the sheep gate. And they stood still in the prison gate. It's interesting. This is a reference to many different gates, fish gate, sheep gate. I suppose they had these places. You know, you go into Walmart today. You have a you have a section where it's lawn and garden or, you know, grocery and clothing and the such like. Their cities had sections where sheep were brought in, fish were brought in, water could be obtained, and even a prison gate. I will comment, I'm not for sure the first time a prison is mentioned or jail, but a ward is mentioned early on because while they were wandering throughout the... the uh, Israelites did not have a prison. Uh, prisons are mentioned early as far as Joseph being in prison, but as far as the Israelites having them, they didn't have them until later on. But they actually, in Jerusalem, had a prison gate, obviously. And the, this says the gate of the guard, where people obviously were put in ward. So stood the two companies of them that gave thanks in the house of God, and I and the half of the rulers with me. So they had two major companies, that would give thanks. Giving thanks, it actually says in the New King James, a Thanksgiving choir, the two of them. That was their purpose. You remember they actually had singers. Just that, that was their job, was to sing at their services or when they would gather. I almost wonder the way it's written sometimes, they didn't have regular singing when someone would come into the temple, that the singers would begin singing, that they had the music you know, going so they would have this sound of these, their voices, the music from their voices lifting up to God. And so they would sing. And the priest, Eliakim, Messiah, Menemim, Micaiah, Elanai, Zechariah, and Hananiah with trumpets, and Messiah, and Shemaiah, and Eliezer, and Uzi, and Jehohanan, and Melchizedek, and Elam, and Ezer. And the singers sang loud with Jezrahiah, with Jezrahiah, their overseer. So it's interesting. They sang loud. They were glad to be back. They, they sung with their hearts. And, uh, you know, the Lord doesn't expect us to sing pretty, but he does expect us to sing with the best ability. And some, if we get in the, you know, it's all beautiful to the Lord when we sing to him. Just a few more verses. It's 47 verses in this chapter. Also that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced. For God had made them rejoice with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoiced. So that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off. When I was reading this verse earlier today, I was thinking about how that their voices, of course the women and children are mentioned here as well, who were usually not included, certainly in the population counts. But the wives and the children also were rejoicing. You could hear their young voices. And of course, the voice of ladies certainly sound different in the singing as opposed to the more bassy voice of men. But the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off. Jerusalem was on a rise, is on a hill. N hardly no trees in the area. And I can just hear their voices carry. You could hear, oh, it says afar off. And that's very interesting. And whenever we sing, we may not be heard afar off, as far as the world's concerned, but the Lord hears us. And at that time were some appointed over the chambers for the treasures, for the offerings, for the first fruits, and for the tithes, to gather into them out of the fields of the cities the portions of the law for the priests and Levites. For Judah rejoiced for the priests and the Levites that waited. That's how the priests were paid. The priests did not have any inheritance or land. They were paid from the things that the people gave. That's how they lived. And both the singers and the porters kept the word of their God and the word of the purification according to the commandment of David and of Solomon, his son. So the singers and the porters uh, kept the word of their God, the word, so they had these places, the word of purification and the way it had been commanded by David and of Solomon, his son. Two more verses. For in the days of David and Asaph of old, there were chief of the singers, and songs of praise and thanksgiving unto God. So we know back to the time of David, they had people appointed over the singing. We have song leaders today, but 
people appointed over the singing and songs of praise and thanksgiving unto God. In the last verse tonight, and all Israel in the days of Zerubbabel and in the days of Nehemiah gave the portions of the singers and the porters every day his portion. So they were paid daily. We've already seen earlier in Jeremiah, or Nehemiah that the, the singers were paid probably with food and necessities, but they gave their portion every day as portion, and they sanctified holy things unto the Levites, and the Levites sanctified them unto the children of Aaron. So the, the goods were given to the people. People were paid. They, had, they were professional singers, if you will. That was their service to God, was to sing. And, of course, the Levites were paid as well. So they're dedicating the wall. Now, next week, we'll be back at the church building, and we'll be reading the last chapter of Nehemiah. It's interesting how it's worked out this way. We'll close out Nehemiah. And then after Nehemiah, we'll get back to the New Testament. We had uh, pulled off, I think, after we finished Matthew. And we did, I think, Ezra and Nehemiah. I'll have to look at the records. And then we'll go back to New Testament on Sunday night before. So I hope that you will be part of our dedication, if you will. Rededicate yourself to coming back if you haven't been able to attend. I know a lot of people right now are probably a little concerned. I think we're really practicing safe things at the church building, masks and spreading out, and and uh, you know the way we're doing communion now. I think it's much more sanitary. I don't think it's necessarily bad before, but uh, the bread in individual cups. We're not putting bread or juice cups back in the tray. They're thrown away at the back. And so I hope that you'll be back and dedicate yourself as we really dedicate, if you will, ourselves as a congregation back to our regular worship. This is a great time of rejoicing that we can return. And let's pray that we're able to remain that way. We'll turn, if you will, to number 288 in the blue book. It's number 19 in the red book. And if there's any announcements, you can text them to me. If you're viewing on YouTube, uh, if you're actually looking at the screen, You'll see that all services next Sunday morning will resume. Sunday night at 6, Wednesday night at 6. No services this Wednesday night, except because I'll be at Horse Cave, but I'll broadcast on Facebook Live. I hope to broadcast a video, and so be watching for that. And uh, so I hope that you can be part of that. I don't see any other announcements coming on. appreciate uh, coming across. appreciate each one who logged on tonight. Uh, we do see a lot of change in society, a lot of decay, decay of morals, decay of the physical world about us. Let's say in verse 2 talks about that decay, but the Lord never changes. Swift to its closes and life's little day Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay all around I see. In just a moment, I'll have our closing prayer. Do take a moment to look at the list. I've added a couple more. Beulah Baker, that's uh, Sharon Franklin's mother. Uh, keep her in mind. It's uh, going, they're going, you know, by herself now at home, but fortunately she does live next door to Stuart and Sharon. Rachel Riffle, who fell down the steps, and along with Grace and the unborn baby, but Rachel seems to be the most injured. Uh, she's going to the doctor tomorrow to, to check about her foot. And she's having to wear a boot right now, so hopefully get that removed. And Stuart's listening, he said, from Muskogee, Oklahoma. So very glad that he uh, tuned in this evening. If there is nothing else, this will close out our worship services from home. It's, I'm thankful for the technology to be able to do it and for the technology where you can listen. But it's going to be so wonderful to be back in person. If there is nothing else, let us pray. Our Father, as we come to the end prayer, we're thankful for our worship service this morning in person. And again this evening, 
online. We pray that it's been in spirit and truth that you've been well pleased. As they of old in the time of Nehemiah came together and rededicated the wall, we pray that we can return next week and rededicate ourselves to our regular worship services, every service, and be there and give our all to you in our worship. Be with our sick. Continue to be with mom. Bless her. and We're thankful she's doing so well. Be with Alice and the pain she has. Ruby's dad. Bless him and thankful he's doing as good as he is. Aaron and Ken Davis both who have health issues. Be with Vicki McDaniel and the pain that she suffers and pray that uh, those issues will be alleviated soon. Jean Coffey and Enola Ziegler. Steve Seaton. Archie and Judy Manning and Brad Terry and Louise Greer, who the latter have all been affected with cancer. With Ms. Baker, she is uh, now widowed and uh, living by herself, that all will go well. Pray that you'll be with Rachel, that you'll protect her, and certainly the unborn child, but uh, that she will heal quickly from her fall and give her good health. Protect us all. Give us a good week. Uh, we pray that this virus will soon be, if not eradicated, that we will certainly have more protection from it. Uh, maybe there will be medicines that will take care of it or protect us from it. Uh, we, we pray that those who are researching it will find something soon that will help the spread of it and the, that it will not be so severe if it's your will to remove it. But most of all, even though that's a concern, keep us from the disease of sin. It's everywhere. It's all about us. But we know we can be fully protected with the blood of Christ. Do keep us from that because that disease is far worse. It can cause us to lose our soul. Forgive us of our sins. Protect us. Bring us together again. Uh, Wednesday evening, as I teach elsewhere, we pray that some can attend and others can listen. and Be with us as we resume our services next Sunday. We pray for easy departure from this life, that maybe you'll let us one night just lay down to rest. And then when we awaken, it'll be on the glorious shores of heaven to dwell with you and the redeemed throughout the endless ages. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.